Today in the news, we got an AMD revelation, NVIDIA being silly, and more. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before that, let me take a second to thank today's video sponsor, WhoKeys. WhoKeys is where you can buy keys like this one for Windows 10 Pro. Get yourself a license with that link down in the description and click buy now and enter the code BTS25 for 25% off. And then you just submit your order. And once you're through with your payment and you receive your key, go to your computer, click on the Windows button, type in activate and update or change your product key. It's that simple. Let's get started with AMD. So the 6500 XT is finally out and the reviews are in. You can check out mine over on the Hardware Connects channel right here. But yeah, this dedicated desktop graphics card is bad. And I mean real bad. It's just way too cut down and too dependent on the platform that you're on. Want to stream on a budget? Bad. Have a older system with PCIe Gen 3? Bad. Game needs more than four gigabytes to run? Bad. Only two display outputs? That's bad. And that stayed in my brain throughout the days after the reveal. Why would AMD release something like that? Well, it looks like we finally have our answer. AMD never really wanted to launch this GPU on the desktop platform. They just had the opportunity to get rid of some bad Navi 24 dies. And backlash aside, I mean, every reviewer has been pretty much bashing this thing. They succeeded. Now, I said that they didn't want to launch it on desktop. That's because it was kind of meant to be a laptop GPU. When paired with a new Romron CPU, a lot of the complaints just disappear. That's because Ryzen 6000, the laptop CPUs, will pick up most of the slack. They all have PCIe Gen 4, check. They all have video encoders and even AV1 decode, check. And they have their own display pipeline with the IGP giving you up to four display outputs. The last problem remaining being the four gigabytes of VRAM, which little tangent here. Did you know that uh, right before the 6500 XT released, AMD went back and removed a blog post about how four gigabytes of VRAM is not enough. And then people figured it out and they promptly put it back up. Don't try to fool the internet, AMD. What happens online stays online. Anyways, going back to the 6500 XT, it's further proved by an AMD employee who said that the primary use of Navi24 will be in laptops paired with a Rembrandt APU, which has full video functionality and PCIe Gen 4. So yeah, I guess it wasn't that much about making it unattractive to minors. What do you guys think about this? Let me know down below. Then we have a quick bit about NVIDIA. So they announced the uh, RTX 3050 at CES. Unfortunately, all we got in terms of performance metrics was these uh, little dot diagrams that the company loves to put out. But now, now we have a new chart. And uh, yeah, NVIDIA, why would you show two out of three games with RTX on when the GPUs don't support it? No wonder people make memes of this. Moving on, we got Lenovo in the news. Now, this is an odd one. So if you wanted to buy a Think Center or really any of the pre-built equipped with a GE version of an AMD processor, well, if in the future you decide to sell your current CPU on the secondhand market to fund your next build or something, or simply to upgrade, well, that CPU that you're trying to sell won't work on any other system except for a Lenovo one. That's because Lenovo vendor locked the CPU using AMD's PSB or platform secure boot. Serve the Home has a great video about this that you should definitely check out but essentially it makes it easier for the CPU to become e-waste. And unfortunately you can't disable PSB and the CPUs are currently unmarked. So in a couple of years when people want to make budget builds using these CPUs coming from a pre-built, they might be buying a nice paperweight. This is supposed to be a security feature, which I understand, but still we have enough e-waste as is. Then in things I missed, it looks like Microsoft is continuing to gobble up gaming companies with their last acquisition being Activision Blizzard. Now, this is a big power move. Just by doing that, Sony lost $20 billion in the market. That means that Microsoft now owns franchises like Call of Duty, Overwatch, and of course, plenty more. I mean, get this, Sony's unofficial mascot like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro are now owned by Microsoft. It's crazy to think of. Sony did make a response to this saying that they expect that Microsoft will abide by contractual agreements and continue to ensure Activision games are multi-platform. 
I mean, yeah, Microsoft can do that, but for how long? Microsoft bought Bethesda a while ago, and they've been running out of ways to say that Starfield, a game that Bethesda has been working on since 2015, will be an Xbox exclusive. Lastly, we got the free game check. On the Epic Store right now, you got Relicta. Is that, is that how you pronounce it? A first-person physics-based puzzle game. Honestly, this one looks pretty cool. It does give me some kind of portal vibes, so this one I'll definitely be trying out. It stops being free next Thursday, so get it now before you forget. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment. If you want to talk about today's stories, as usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one.